Greetings, dear ones. I am Crying of Magnetic Service. Oh, there, there are so many who would see this transformation and not understand it. They say it's the voice you've been listening to all these hours. They'll say just, it isn't possible. There is an audience that is not here, and yet it is present. Let us speak of the quantumness of the message. As I speak to you now, the energy builds in here. These are words now, not for those on the chairs, but for those, the, the ones in the chairs think are in the future. We speak now about those who would listen later and read later. Reader, does it feel like later to you? <laughs> the answer is no, you see. Reader, I know about you. I know about the eyes that are on the page. What does that tell you about the quantumness of this event? For to the ones in the chairs at the moment, you don't exist. They're on a linear timeline that does not allow them to see what I see. The potential of your eyes there. If you're reading this, know you're dearly loved. I'm telling you this in a time frame that is real to you. It is right now for you, for these, these are the times when your eyes are there. Listener, there are many of you at many times spread out over months, perhaps even years. I know who you are too. The love of God has no limit, no bounds. It is a quantum love that pervades space, everything around you, everything that you are. If you really knew the truth, the human walks in a bubble of 3D. And the angelic presence of love is all around you. It always has been. The hands stretch out to you from the angelic realm. Hoping along the line you will open your heart and touch them just once. And if you do, there may be an epiphany of the way things work on earth, the way things work in your life. There's an old paradigm that says that you climb a ladder to reach God and you hope you make it before you die. Oh, if I could give you the real picture, if I could show it to you now in a vision. There's no ladder. God is there now. Always has been. All it's taken for, for the distance between us is intuition and intent. And yet these are the hardest things to create to a human being who doesn't want to go there. I sit before light workers. They're the ones who are reading this. They're, they're the ones who are, are listening. And so it is they who I wish to address this message to. Bits and pieces of this message given through many years. Not all of it is new, but it's never been put together in this fashion. It needs to be heard succinctly. For it carries with it instructions on your conceptions, on your perceptions of the way things work. I'm going to entitle this message The Common Misconceptions of Lightworkers. It's a teaching session. There'll be six points. And I'm almost ready to begin. But not yet. Not yet. Now I want to talk to the ones in the chairs in front of me. Known to me you are, in the most loving way you can think. There are three people here, three human beings, precious they are, that don't want to be here. What would they do for the people with them? But well, they don't believe this. There's three of you, and you know who you are. And I don't want to tell you, 
what's interesting about you. Behind that veil of stubbornness, there's a shaman. Oh, you'd make a beautiful light worker. Free choice will be yours if you choose to accept this or not, to plant the seeds of curiosity or not, or whether you just leave here happy to be escaping from all of this. The setup has brought you here so we can sit next to you and love you. We're not going to touch you. You won't go out differently than you came in unless you want to. Most of those who sit in these chairs in this place you call Tempe are old souls. And the new energy of this planet is awakening you just exactly as it should. The combination of the harmonic convergence energy in cooperation with the Gaia energy that the Mayans spoke of is all ramping up at a time which you would call difficult and we say is appropriate. You're starting to see integrity make a difference on the planet, invading even the darkest places you thought it would never go. Government, financial. We spoke of these things not too long ago, and here they are. Do not fear them, for when you emerge on the other side, there is strength, there is clarity, there is prosperousness. All of the things that you have asked for without the corruption to the degree that it exists now. This is good news. We said it before, it is called pruning. I say that for you who are sitting in the chairs who need to know at this time about that. In the chairs, old souls, I see who you are, I see who you were. I have to get to the message so that it works within the time frame that you have desired. But there's part of me that just wants to sit and reveal, reveal, reveal the lifetimes, the energies, the victories of those in this room. It's so grand, so beautiful. There is a difference between the old and the new energy, even of metaphysics. The things that you believe, that you would feel are the, the bastions of belief of the esoteric are starting to shift. The new tools that have come in in the last 19 years have been grand. And they are starting to reveal themselves in ways that we said they would. You are starting to have intuitive ideas which will absolutely manifest what you want. In the process, we must tell you there are six items that are misconceptions. One of them is one of the oldest things. We spoke about it even in 1989, delivered to you in 1993, all about karma. <clears throat> karma is one of the oldest energies on the planet, that is to say, it is appropriate and it has been here since Lemurian times. It is the setup, it is the engine of active expression, let us say, from human to human, situational energy which manifests itself over and over and stays in your DNA, stays in the crystal in the cave of creation, belongs to you and is placed upon you when you get here. Some of the most ancient and profound religions on the planet, the belief systems of the Hindu, the belief systems of some of the originals on earth, the Buddhists, they go back thousands of years. They knew about karma. You've heard it all of your life. It exists. It's true. And when you're born, it is placed upon you like it always has been placed upon you. Situationally, it gives you a predisposed energy to go in a certain direction. 
Call it energy puzzles of life if you wish. And you do. And when we came in, into this plane and started channeling to you the messages, the first thing we said that there is a new gift that voids karma. We even called it the implant, which is, to, is explained easily as the implantation of your intent to go beyond karma. That's what it is. Crying, you mean we don't need it? <clears throat> it would be detrimental. It's part of the old setup. If you haven't noticed, this earth is in a new energy pattern. A profound new energy pattern. The things predicted have not happened. And the things that will be predicted may not happen. For the human being is in charge. Your consciousness shifts from day to day. Large groups who pray a certain way, who think a certain way, can actually move what happens on the planet, which you think are accidental or synchronistic. You have control over them. You always have. But in this new energy, karma is not necessary, it is not needed. And when you come to the age and the place in your life, not to intellectualize it, but to realize it and feel it, you can move off of it. Intent is the key, it is not needed. So the first misconception we wish to tell you is that you're still involved in karma. Some of you feel and have stated to others, well this is why I came here, this is what I'm supposed to do to undo this or to do this because of what happened last time. It is not so. The first thing you should do is to remove yourself from the imprint that you were born with that might carry a past life impression. This is the first age where this is ability is, is yours. That's number one. It is perhaps one of the most important ones you have. <clears throat> there are those in the room that are still upon certain karmic attributes. Karma is not something that occurs in a, in a lump that you then throw away. It is a complex array of energies that is placed upon your personality that pushes the buttons within you that make a predisposed attitude to move left or right in certain situations. And some of you have, have voided a lot of it, but not all. And there's residuals that are still there. Even the healers in this room have them. What are the things that bother you? One of the blocks that you'd like to get through, I want to tell you those are most likely the karmic attributes that you never wanted anybody to touch. They're sacred to you. They even define you. Sit with spirit a moment and say, I release them. I don't need them anymore. You can do it right now with me if you'd like to. Dear spirit, I release them. I don't need them anymore. This is a dispensation of grace. Indeed it is. This is the time for those kinds of decisions. This is the year for it. Is the energy for it. And you're here doing it. Number two. The word contract is a misnomer. And lightworkers use it so common. My contract is this. Or it is that. <clears throat> Again, you have a, a feeling that you have an agreement with God. There's something you're supposed to do. Unbelievable. But some of you feel that you've come in with a contract to suffer. And you'll speak it out loud to others. Well, this time around, I know I'm going to have some trials and some tribulations. I've I have a contract to do this. I have to be here. I have to, to clean up this. I have to clean up that. I want to tell you, dear one, I'll put it in, in linear terms for you. Your contract is in invisible ink and it disappears every day. When you get up in the morning, you can re-sign that contract and you can fill in the words. 
You can make it anything you want to be. No one here, listening, reading, in person, has a contract. Doesn't exist. No such thing. Because the contract was part of an overlay of karmic energy. It's still there. You still feel it is there. And you may disagree. You may say, yes, but I feel I must do something. I, I have to go here or there. It's, it's what I was, I was built to be. I, this is what I'm supposed to do. And dear ones, it very well may be. But it's not a contract. You can understand a little more when we get to point number six. Stay with me. If you are one who wants a contract, then make it. But it only lasts a day. And tomorrow, if you decide you want to make it bigger, you can erase the signature and do it again. That's the power of the human being. You're not stuck in a groove where you've come in and you have to do something. Dear one, dear angelic being, dear awakening creature of God, you are all powerful. You can do whatever you want. That was number two. Number three is timing. My partner touched on this already today. I'll say it again for those who are not here to hear it. You are often given information about you and your life and the things that you might accomplish. Some intuitive ideas of which way to go, which way to turn, perhaps even ideas to manifest a physical thing, perhaps a book, an invention, a healing modality. And you do it. You march right out and do it. It's information given you from God, from spirit, and you feel so passionate about it. And there you go and you do it and you fall on your face. <laughs> it fails completely, doesn't work. Nobody's interested, no synchronicity. And we say to you, why do you link the message with the clock? Who told you to do that? There's two parts to this, and you should know this. There is the information, there is the download. This is what you call, in modern terms, the place at which you get quantum information delivered to you, and you have a plan. The second part is patience and synchronicity. The first one, which is very difficult for a human being, patience. Especially with spiritual things, you're on fire for this. You finally got an answer. You finally got something tangible. And you want to move with it. So hard. <clears throat> Synchronicity is the engine of manifestation. That is to say, you, pre you prepare, but you do not act. The next stage is to wait the energy to come to you. You're on a constantly changing timeline of reality. In that reality, there is a synchronistic place that will appear. It will push you into manifesting that which was given to you and in the information you received at a quantum level. <coughs> this is difficult, even for my partner to translate to you. One of the points you're going to hear In fact, the next one has to do with timing as well. We're going to tell you you shouldn't wait for God. Don't misinterpret this. You are creating the synchronicity. It's just you don't know when it's going to occur. So timing is critical. Feel the energy of the moment. Wait for those things to occur which will enhance your idea, bring the right people together at the right time. You start to get the feeling chills will occur when you start understanding the synchronicity is creeping up. This is the time. 
That is when you should launch this that you've been given. Not at the point you were given it. Disconnect the message from the timing. And you'll be far, far better off. And then as my partner said earlier, for all of those of you who tried these things and failed, it is the human perception of reality to then put upon them the energy that they failed and they are then thrown away. Who told you that? You put them on the shelf in all their beauty and you wait for the synchronicity to illuminate them in all its beauty. When the vibratory rates are correct and synchronicity applies itself, the manifestation will occur. Now I'm not just talking about things either, I'm talking about jobs, relationships, finances, all of these things work this way, all of them. <clears throat> Number four, it's how God works, the timing. There was a day when humanity was in a place where they were asked to be still and let God work. And you had all manner of, of names for it and catchphrases for it. Be still and let God work in your life. That changed dramatically to harmonic convergence for this was an empowering energy of humanity. The peace of God in you began to vibrate at a level where you were beginning to become a leader in the process. That is to say, share responsibility in the process. The idea of let go and let God sounds wonderful and now it doesn't work. <laughs> this is a total misconception and here is the correct and proper way and we tell you this that you must stand up from where you are and push on the door if you expect action and on the other side of that door of intent is a hand that loves you it is the hand of God it is the hand of the higher self the hand of spirit if you will it has always wanted to be touched ready for you to take a hold of it ready for you to grab it if you want to manifest something, it's not going to come and fall in your lap. Those are the old days. Because you are now an active piece of the energy of manifestation. This is the new role of the light worker. You get up and you start pushing on the doors, searching for the synchronicity that will allow the timing to occur. It's you who makes it happen. Well, Crying, you just told us a moment ago we're supposed to wait till the synchronicity comes along. No. <laughs> You're supposed to be patient until you push on enough doors and the synchronicity comes along. That's what I said. Number five of six. There was a day, dear ones, when those who knew these vibratory truths were vulnerable. When the darkness is pervasive, it swallows up so much of what you have. No matter how high your vibration, you had to walk circumspectly. Be careful. In an older energy, healers were told to be careful. Where there was energy of sickness and low vibratory rates, which, which could slop, as you want to say, on to them. And, in their auric fields, in the, in the interdimensional fields of DNA, transfer one from another. You were told to be careful. Protect yourself is what you were told. And now we tell you differently. It's almost like a switch was thrown. What happened in the harmonic convergence? And subsequent to that, almost 20 years later, almost a generation later, you stand here with the ability to strike a light in your personality, in your body, that is so bright that there is nothing that will touch it. Listen to me. Nothing that will touch it. You push light so hard, there isn't one piece of darkness that can get in. Wherever you go, 
If your light is pure, you will not be touched by any dark thing if your light is pure. There is no sickness that you have to be afraid of when you go to, to do something so profound as heal someone. You could get right into somebody's aura who is, is, uh, is unbalanced and look them in the eye and not be afraid that you might also get it. That's all gone. That's all gone. Think of yourself as pushing light, always pushing light, lighthouse. And there's not a piece of darkness getting close to you. You ought to celebrate that. That is such a difference between the old and the new. You ought to celebrate it. As I've said so many times, where is the statue built for these gifts? Where is your celebration? Where are the songs that should be written for how much you've grown? <laughs> oh, we've just had an epiphany <laughs> in the audience. There's a healing going on, which doesn't always happen. There's only one attribute left, but let's stop for a moment. I want to tell you what light workers do for light workers. There's someone here on the edge of a healing, and I'll tell you, I'm not going to give a name. I'll say that's why they came. I want you to turn your light on them, even though you don't know who it is, because you're in a quantum state with them, and you know family right now. Create with me the balance that they seek. The answer to the problems that they have. For what you do is to enhance their own healing. You make it mature. They begin it. They start it. They have the epiphany. They generate it. They manifest it. And you, my good friends, my family, are the ones who pull the covers on. Tuck them in. And make it go away. That's a metaphor for a child in fear who goes to sleep at night, safe and sound. I want to tell you, dear one, it's about time you had peace over this. You could walk out of here. You don't have to worry about it. There's been a miracle here tonight. And you'll only know about it later. But it's real and it's happened and the seed has been planted. Here's number six. Cry on. I know I'm supposed to do something. I'm feeling it. I'm supposed to be something. You've awakened everything in me and I want to know what I can be. I have to do something. I, I feel there's a book, there's a, a, a protocol, there's a... A system. I want to study it. I want to. I want to go and heal people. I'd like to quit my job and travel, perhaps. And I want to tell people about this that I feel so strongly about this. I don't want to pop your bubble, but I want you to relax for a moment. This is a three-dimensional concept goal setting, cause and effect, success, victory. Say whatever you want to. This is a three-dimensional concept. That's you talking to you. That's not the message God gave you and you've got to start separating it because I'll give you the message. A few of it, indeed, a few of you have been given specific instructions for things which must be done. And that was addressed in number three and four. But number six is about you wanting to succeed spiritually. And I'm going to give you information as loving as I can, the best as I can, about why you came. This family you call God, what you call Creator, doesn't care what you do. We don't care. Because you're already doing it. The invitation is to strike a light in your life of self-improvement, of informational purity. Take the hand of the angel next to you, you call the higher self, 
have the epiphanies of your own self-healing, your own self-improvement. Mind the Akash, do everything yourself, within yourself, and I'll tell you, that's all. And that's everything. And anything else you do, whether it's a system or whether it's school or whether it's healing, is what you have placed upon yourself for your own reasons so that you will feel in 3D like you've accomplished something. And you never knew. How do I say it? That your light is changing the earth where you're walking. Right where you walk. This is the love of God that you're dispensing. A purity from the higher self that radiates outward with a metaphor of light which changes the crystalline grid, which, which modifies the vibration of the planet, which eventually can create peace on earth. And you're saying you want to do something. Let the angels in this room rejoice for the ones that are just being and not doing. Take care of yourself. Everything you can do for yourself, that's what changes the planet. And in the process, if synchronicity takes you to places where you can help people, be the author, be the writer, so be it. But the real work is in your own DNA for you. Purify it. That's where the light is. That's what we want you to do. And that's the message of today. May the listener and the reader understand that these principles remain sound and they will for your lifetime biggest shift you have seen in hundreds and hundreds of years occurred on the harmonic convergence and that particular shift is leading you right in to the 2012 energy which is the Gaia energy that is high shaking hands with the enlightened energy of the harmonic convergence it's going to take you to a place this planet never thought it would be the potentials are there for solution as ugly as it may look, they are there. Challenges may occur. The earth shifts greatly. The energy of the planet is shifting with your consciousness. I speak in the month of October 2008. October is the 10th month. It is a one. It is new beginnings. There are things which will create new beginnings that potentially will happen this month. Potentials are not reality. They're not even predictions. They're potentials. And there are many of them. And for one very large one. We're free to say this. For if nothing takes place whatsoever, I'll have another message of how you modified the potential. But you have not heard Cryon talk about this before. The potential is almost half and half. And when it gets to that size, we say to you, watch the synchronicity be circumspect where you are. God loves you enough to put you in the right place at the right time. Don't fear change. That is the message, dear ones, from an entity that has never been a human being, who sees you in awe of what you go through, lifetime after lifetime, with the bodies that you have, the frailties that are yours, the puzzles that are beyond your comprehension, the limits that have been put upon your thinking, and you're the ones doing the work. You put yourself in that box because you love this place called Earth. There'll come a day when I'll see you in your fullness yet again. <laughs>